It says, are notable examples, but the practice was f frowned upon after the return from exile. Ezra 9 and 12, 10, 2 to 44, Nehemiah 10 and 30, and Nehemiah 13, 23 through 31. Separation between Jew and Gentile became more strict until in the New Testament period, the hostility is complete. Persecution embittered the Jew and he retaliated by hatred of everything Gentile and by avoidance so far as we... Oh, now, hatred of everything Gentile is talking about those Israelites in a Gentile state of mind because they deemed them as being Gentiles, okay? So that's why they had a hatred for them and wouldn't, uh, would at, fir at the first wouldn't allow them in. That's why the Lord had to bring that vision in Acts 10 to, to, to Peter about them unclean animals. Those unclean animals represented Israel that was uncircumcised, that, that was dressing up like the heathen, you know, that maybe shaved all their head, hair off, put tattoos on them. They did everything contrary to the law. So the Most High said, you cannot call something unclean that I have made clean, meaning he cleaned Israel, man. And Cornelius was a, was a, a key example of that. He was cleansed by, they were cleansed by the word. It says, and he retaliated by hatred of everything Gentile and by avoidance so far as was possible of contact with the Gentiles. The intensity of this feeling varied and gave away and gave way before unusual kindness. Luke 7, 4 and 5. While the teachings of Yahweh Shai ultimately broke down the middle wall of partition between Jew and Gentile. Those were Israelites. Those were Israelites. Somebody hold on deck uh, Ephesians 2. Okay, good. Then read that. Spirit. Spirit. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. It says, Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, Right, so this is, this is uh, the Apostle Paul telling him that this is talking about Israel, the Israelite foreigners that was coming back into the truth. So he's reminding them, saying that at one time you was acting like the Gentile, because why? They was following the, the Greek customs, so forth and so on, right? So he said, wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision. Right, meaning in other words, you was they were being called Heathens by what? The Jews at Jerusalem, which were the circumcision, because why? They were keeping the laws and the commandments and everything, and they were looking at the other Israelites that was in the, the uh, Gentile state of mind. They was calling them heathens, you know, because they was doing the same thing that the heathens were do, doing. It says that at that time ye were without the anointed Yahweh Shai Mashiach, meaning before you came into the truth, which in a sense all of us fall under this at this point. You know, we all were Gentiles, you know. It says, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, which is what? Of, of the kingdom of heaven is, is knowledge, man. All right? The, the law, statutes, and commandments. It says, and strangers, showing you that what? The Israelite foreigner could be a stranger as well. Could be referred to as a stranger, because at one time, we were all strangers. It says, strangers from the covenants, right? The, which is what? Going back to the promises of uh, the Most High made with Abraham. Isaac and Jacob, the chosen line, right? Having no hope and without the most high in the world, which all of us, because, you know, we was calling ourselves black. That's why you shouldn't be calling yourself a black Hebrew Israelite, because basically you have no hope. Black, black is void of color. When you take all colors out, the spectrum of the rainbow or the spectrum of all colors, if I'm explaining it right, I'm not no scientist, is white. When you bring all the co colors, colors together, Roy G. Biv, you bring them colors together. I learned that in school, Roy G. Biv. That's how you remember them colors, the spectrum of colors. You bring that together, that forms the color white. Black is void of color, man. So why would you call yourself black? Nothing. It's nothing. Yeah. You know? Now, you, you mentioned it's strangers, right? It says... Uh, it says, uh, Isaiah 14 and 1, For Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land, and the strangers shall be joined unto them. A lot of Jakes, they'll say it's talking about them Edomites. Ari, I used to teach that. 
Them strangers is talking about Israel, man. Right. The Gentiles, That's right. That's right. starting with Cornelius. It says, and the strangers um, um, uh, Israelites. So when you come across that word, and the strangers, you think of Israelite, Gentile, state of mind, Israelites, shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. The house of Jacob represents the ones that are awoken, which these ones that are not woken, they're going to wake up, and they're going to come follow us. So we represent Jacob right now, all right? Like the, 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 the brother out there in the Philippines. He's one of the strangers that shall cleave unto the house of Israel. The brother out there in Kenya, if he's an Israelite, he shall cleave unto the house of Israel. Who, who else do we got from other nations? We got brothers from all over the place, man. Guys that look like Edomites, man. Holland and all over the place, man. Upstate, it says, and the people shall take them and bring them to, to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them. Now, the reason why you say that's talking about the Edomites because it's saying them. It's talking about them. No, it's talking about the other nations now. All right? Shall possess them in the land of, of Yahweh for servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. So that's a cut to them guys the Israel of God. Uh, it says, um, oh, you, you didn't read the, the two and two, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, it's right. you read the point. point. The point. You, got the, you got the point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You the point? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, so let me jump down to the, to the other point. There's another point in here, just to go with the same, what the apostle just brought out. Uh, we jump, there's Ephesians 2, and I'll jump to, I mean, you can read on, but I'll jump down to 18. It says, for through him, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father, meaning the Israelite foreigners and the, and the Jews that were at Jerusalem, right? It says, now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of the Most High, showing you that what? That an Israelite could be considered a, a stranger. That's not talking about the so-called white man. You know, that's a stumbling block to, to, you know, you guys that ain't right, man. You know, if you do any research, and uh, Apostle Ronald, I quote the scripture earlier in, in Proverbs, wisdom is the principal thing, therefore with all that I get and get understanding. You got to know the context of the scripture mm -hmm. when you're reading about the, the strangers and, and Gentiles. You got to know when it's talking about the uh, actual person of another nation or when it's talking about an Israelite who fell away from the customs and laws and tradition of Israel and followed the, the other nations. Uh, you got to be able to discern, you see. Galatians, Galatians, um, all right, I'm going to start uh, 26, Galat Galatians 3, 26, for ye are all children of the Most High by faith in Yahweh Shai, for as many of you as have been baptized into Yahweh Shai, have put on Yahweh Shai. It ain't talking about being dunked in some water. The baptism is talking about being washed, all right? So we're, we're baptizing you right now. So the actual water dunking is, is symbolic of you immersing yourself into this word. That's what it's talking about, man. It says, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Yahweh Shai. And if ye be Yahweh Shai's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So what did it mean by Greek? If you're not deep into the scriptures, you're going you're gonna to get knocked off the horse, so to speak. It said, there is neither Jew nor Greek. What does it mean by Jew and what does it mean by Greek? It's talking about Israelites uh, of the circumcision that were born as being Israelites that found out about the Messiah. The Greeks is talking about what? It's talking about them Israelites in a Gentile state of mind. Yeah, like Timothy, yeah. Um, 
Well, actually, Timothy's father. Well, so Timothy, hold up. This is what uh, uh, the HODC um, and them, those clowns over there. If 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 Cornelius is an Edomite, is Timothy an Edomite? That's my question. And I'm gonna I'm gonna hunt you guys with that. I'm I'm gonna hunt. I'm gonna I'm go. I'm gonna hunt. I'm gonna ask that question. I'm gonna ask Dopey too, cause yeah. Dopey, you about ready to, most high about ready to dip you. This is uh, while the teachings of Yahweh Shai ultimately broke down the middle wall of partition between Jew and Gentile. Now you know what that means, as is seen in the writings of Paul, Romans 1 and 16, 1 Corinthians 1, 24, Galatians 3, 28, Ephesians 2, 14, Colossians 3, 11, And in Acts, yet Yahweh Shai limited his ministry to Jews with rare exceptions, the half-Jewish Samaritans, uh, which they're going off on that. Uh, St. John 4, 1 through 42, uh, the Syrophoenician woman, yeah, because that woman at the well, she was a heathen. The Syrophoenician woman, Matthew 15, 21 through 28, Mark 7, 24 through 30. The Syrophoenician woman was an Israelite. The woman at the well was an Isra- a, a Edomite. I mean, not an Edomite, a uh, a, 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 a na- another nation, a Greek. The Greeks in John twelve twenty through thirty six, which those are Israelites. He instructed his twelve disciples, "Go not into the way of the Gentiles," and that's right. And into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. Matthew ten and five, but did not repeat this injunction when he sent out the seventy. Luke ten one through sixteen. Because it was already, uh, he didn't have to keep repeating itself. I'm, I'm cursed. Yeah, when he said, uh, yeah, when he said, go not to the Gentiles, neither any city of the Samaritans, that's he not, but go rather to the Lord's sheep, the house of Israel. What do you mean by Lord's sheep? Right. He's talking about them gent- Gentile-minded Israelites, man. Right. Cornelius was a Lord's sheep. Right. What the hell is wrong with you guys? Right. Oh, I, I, I remember. You, you guys are not of the elect. Right. Most I didn't give you the mysteries. <laughs> Yahweh Shai's mission was first to his own, John 1 and 11, the chosen people of the Most High, but ultimately to as many as received him, John 1 and 12. That's talking about the Israelites that no matter what condition they were in that accepted Yahweh Shai. Because you had Israelites that knew they were Jews, that, were, that had the garments and everything, were going to the synagogue, but they rejected Yahweh Shai. It says in Acts... From the appointment of Paul as the apostle of the Gentiles, Israelite foreigners, uh, 9 and 15, Acts 9 and 15, the Gentiles become increasingly prominent. Even the letters addressed particularly to Jewish Christians, James 1, uh, James, 1 Peter, Hebrew, Romans 9 through uh, chapters 9 through 11, are relevant to the Gentiles also the division of all mankind into two classes. Jew and Gentiles, Jew and Gentile, emphasizes the importance of the Jews as the people through whom the Most High made salvation available to all people. That, that was it on that. Anybody got it? Any, any scriptures? This is uh, the book of St. John, chapter 7, verse 35. Then said the Jews among themselves, with, let me start at verse 34, 33. Uh, then said Yahweh Shai unto them, Yet a little while am I with you, and then I go unto him that sent me. Ye shall seek me, and shall not find me. And where I am, thither you cannot come. Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go that we should not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? So, so, that, so that, that's uh, showing you right there that they knew. Them, them guys that were going, them scribes and fire, them wicked guys, they, the Israelites, they knew. They knew that there was um, a di- diaspora of Israel, man, that were deemed as being Israelites, man. So he said, would he go among the, 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 the Gentiles, Israelites? Would he go among the Gentiles to teach the Gentiles? Would he go among the Israelite foreigners to teach the Israelite foreigners? Cause what what the records say that he came on he came on this side of the world, man. Okay, 
were un- under the name they gave him the name because they went off for Quetzalcoatl. You know. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and uh, and then when you read that that scripture in the Hebrew. And they said, because I went to Mexico in '87. There's a there's a museum down there called the M- Museo de Antropolio, if I'm saying it right, the Museum of Anthropology, and they have an exhibit where they said that this man, they they meant, I think they mentioned um, Quetzalcoatl or Kukulkan, Kukulkan. They said that he came down in a spaceship, and he taught Issachar, and then he and then he went back up into a spaceship, and he said he's coming back the same way. Yeah, Khan. Yeah, and that scripture um, that Elder Menachem just read in uh, uh, Saint John seven thirty five, when it says, "Will he go to the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles?" When you go to the Greek, it says, "It says to the uh, uh, the Greeks, will he go among? Will he go to the Greeks and teach the Greeks?" You know, that's that's what that scripture says there. It doesn't really say the word Gentile when you go to the Greek. And the word is Helen. And the word is Helen, right? Which which is our Israelite foreigners. You know? So they you know that that's that's what you know you this that's what the scripture say rightly divine the word of truth. You know? Which you guys are not doing, period. If you were rightly dividing the word of truth, you would be you would be down you would be down with the great millstone, man. You know? And that's why a lot of you guys are, 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 are some of your doctrine is off. You know, you might have 80% or 75%. They're all off, man. They're all off, man. You know? You know, because a little leaven leavened the whole lump. They off, man. They off. You know? You, you have some? On a map, you got turns, right? You can get a, you can get 99% of the turns right and go go off one turn in the middle. You off. You know? This is the book of St. John, chapter 10, uh, verse, well, I'll start at 13. It says, the hireling fleeth because he is in the hireling and careth not for the sheep. So that's that's what will happen with them, these sellouts. When all hell break loose, they're going to leave these, they're going to leave their congregation, you know, basically exposed when Esau really rolls on them. But now this is 14. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep. This is Yahweh Shai speaking. It says, and am known of mine, as the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. You see, and, and Yahweh Shai went over their head, man. Because and Yahweh Shai knew he was going to come, because at that time, the, the other tribes were already in, in was being called the New World. Over here today in the Americas, okay, and and Yahweh Shai knew that, that he was gonna come over here too and, and gather the elect amongst them, you know, amongst the other tribes because it wasn't just about Judah, but according to the prophecy, because Judah's the head tribe, Judah was the, the first ones to receive to receive the truth or salva- salvation or the gospel, the news, the good news of the kingdom of heaven. Uh, this is First Corinthians, uh, twelve and one. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. So the scripture says you know that you were Gentiles, because uh, also in Psalms it says that wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his ways by giving heed according to thy words. So when, when they heard the word, they were transformed from that, that, that Gentile state of mind back to being Israelites. You know, but it took a process of time. They couldn't do it overnight, you know, because they were brought up that way. They were brought up as being being Greeks, you know, being uh, uh, like being like almost like heathens. So they had to be transformed, you know, and by, by the renewing of their mind. And that's what happened. That's what took place. And, the, and what made them unclean and what made them Gentiles and heathens was the fact that they were following after those dumb idols. That's what gave them that label. You know, that's that's why the, the Jews. Uh, disdain them the the Jews of 